SAS were probably the the best trained special forces soldiers that we had uh, in the entire war. Uh, other units would think that they were, but we we were deployed where in, in, into the toughest situations. Um, Mostly external, sometimes internal, but very few. Uh, Long-range operations, the SAS followed the same style selection courses as the British SAS and Australian and New Zealand SAS. I think anybody who's done a SAS course thinks that their course was the worst in the world, because <laughs> to them it would have felt like that. Uh, second best was not an option. You had to be mentally and physically fit with an aptitude for special force operations. And no matter what the, how impossible the mission seemed, it was expected of you to, to succeed. And we trained for that. Uh, us guys knew that it was the training that would make, make all the difference. And, and so it didn't matter how tough the training was, we willingly partook of that and, and endured it. But actually, um, before my selection course, there were others, <clears throat> and out of a hundred people, you might get five who would pass. Might. Sometimes none passed. Uh, then one or two would pass. And, and what the powers that be decided was that we were wasting time trying to find the, uh, enough staff to accomplish our our missions with. So they in, um, created a, a rookies course for three months in which uh, applicants could join. They would go away for the three months and they would be made fit enough for the, for the course. And it was actually a, almost like a pre-selection. If they weren't suitable, they would be just sent home. And then out of a, a group of 100, we might get 20 candidates that would succeed. Uh, I was keen to join the SAS and I went and asked if, I, if they would accept me. And at that stage, I was 37. So the recruitment officer looked at me as if I was out of my mind. And uh, this, here's this ancient applicant before him and, and the guys of 19 and 20 were really much fitter than I was. They, they, weren't, they had no chance of succeeding. So he said to me, go on this course. Uh, it's, there's only six weeks of it left, but it, it will help you for, what it, for the duration that, that it has, which I did. Well, I thought I was fit before I went there and I found out very rapidly that I wasn't at all fit. <laughs> Uh, and anyway, I, it, it helped me. I got through the selection okay. Um, it was a little bit of a disadvantage being 37 because there was a, a kind of prejudice going on about uh, taking somebody who was much older than the rest of the guys. And so f for about three or four stints, I was assigned to camp duties <clears throat> forward on fo forward base camps uh, and one one day our commanding officer happened to be staying over for a night and he asked me how it was going and I told him that I wasn't happy at all and he asked me why and I said well I'm not getting any combat and he said I guarantee you a contact within one week I said thank you very much that's what I want and I put up a good show during that contact and the result was that people, other section commanders were quite keen to have me in, in the section. And from there it went from strength, strength to strength. Uh, 